believe that colleges in particular um, usually take the time to look at all the materials that students send as part of their application. So they are the mandatory questions and the required parts, um, which is pretty good. I mean, your transcript is a bit of a reflection of your personality. What have you taken other than what's required, you know, in all the different subject areas plus our electives. We have extra stuff compared to other high schools. So, so that's all on the transcript. That's a, an illustration of your personality. There's always a spot for extracurricular activities, uh, descriptions. Sometimes it's a pull down menu, sometimes it's a cut and paste of a description. There's a little bit of space for anything else you do outside of school. And then, you know, eventually teacher letters of recommendation kind of paint a picture of you. Hopefully there's an essay. Most of the colleges require an essay. That is certainly revealing of your personality and who you are. But there is this piece that a lot of Gulliver students need to really complete the whole package, which is the portfolio. Now, we kind of advertise this as more business engineering architecture, partly because the visual arts department kind of requires it as part of their classes anyway. So if you're in you know, AP Studio Art year two, you already have your portfolio going on. But the idea is, and some visual arts colleges require very specific things in the portfolio. Two sketches, one watercolor, two oil painting. And that's going to be unique to the individual university. But this is a little bit different. This doesn't really have required specifications because how many kids in high school have done anything substantial in business or leadership or service or architecture or engineering? I mean, it's just not usual. So this is a little less structured and is a little more in, in unique to who you are and reflective of who you are. The other thing is, even though I'm a counselor and I'm like, oh, it's about college, it's not about college. It's about a lot of different things. Some students can get an internship because they have a portfolio ready to go. Some uh, companies won't even consider you as an applicant for an internship unless you have a one-page resume, a portfolio of your, your projects and your work in an organized manner that's very clear what your role was in all your projects, and then also a, a paragraph description of narrative about either what you're looking for in an internship or the skills in, uh, uh, that you have because of the experiences you've had. So portfolios are something that are fluid and organic and are always changing. Um, when you apply to college, you've got to stop working on it at some point and send it. But otherwise, they're, they're just a growing, a growing piece that hopefully you'll just for always and always have with you. So um, I think we're going to start with architecture. But to be completely honest, the, this is very ap applicable to anything you do. I mean, I know students whose like, service is their thing. Portfolio is an appropriate way to illustrate all the service projects you've done because a little paragraph in your application or a little this isn't really revealing. Okay, what what do you guys take outside of regular academics that you might feel like belong in the portfolio? What do you do? Community service. A lot of service. Yeah. Ar architecture. Your architecture. Yeah. What, do you, what uh, electives do you take? Architecture and three D. Okay. Oh, there you go. Both. Business. Okay. Business. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. So a little bit of everything. Very nice. And actually. Yeah, Miss Menrique is the expert. Okay. No, uh, actually, Especially what I'm going to mention is like uh, uh, it was said that it's an ongoing process. I mean, you start a portfolio. It doesn't matter how early in your life you started, but it's something that never ends. Uh, you're going to continue to stay adding to it. Uh, we have examples of how we have formatted and how what kind of uh, presentation we have for the portfolios, but these are not necessarily strictly architectural portfolios. We have fine arts, and you can include other uh, pieces of work, like for uh, some of you that have the business, we have musicians and all that, and they do include it in that portfolio, even though they are applying to architecture school. I have students that have used their architectural portfolio as an example, and they are applying to medical school. You don't have to apply to the, to the School of Architecture. Uh, now, different universities do have requirements as to how many pieces you're going to have, because you're going to have, um, uh, usually it averages about ten, from 10 to 20, no more than 20. Uh, at this level, you're supposed to start with a very strong piece and end with a very strong piece. You don't want to... Um, you know, compile things, this is uh, we're done the first year, then the second. No, you mix things so that it will be interesting throughout. 
Um, it's very, very important that you have an introduction to yourself. You know, you, you have to introduce yourself in some kind of a essay or something as a, as a cover sheet. But um, any recommendations, if you, um, you're welcome to look at all of these. But uh, any recommendations from internships? Uh, we have students that have been given awards in, um, by, uh, you know, congressmen, this, that. All that is included in that portfolio. So it's not limited to a specific subject, and but right. you know, because it is all connected. I mean, leadership takes mm -hmm. different forms. It can be service. It can be art. It can be creativity. Takes different forms. <laughs> if you're working on a project and you you know changed it or added a new piece that's never been done before, that it's all related. You know, mm -hmm. colleges or or you know bosses who are looking for an architect want to see some of your teamwork, some of your service, some of your altruistic side, some of your organizational skills, your leadership, not just straight architecture skills. If um, a business, I mean, arguably, every skill under the planet can be incorporated into business, right? Whether it's communication or creativity or um, collaboration. I mean, there's so many things going on that, um, you know, yes, you can make it too long. Yes, you can make it, you know, don't yeah, put you, inappropriate you, you, you things in there. You don't there want to make it too long. Yeah. Piece, you have to be, that there could, people that review right. them, they don't want them too long. Uh, yes. One thing that you, that is, that you have to stress is, number one, the portfolio has to be compiled by you, and you are the one that's going to be making the portfolio. You could have uh, a mentor, you know, like I'm, I mentor my students, but it has to be their work. It's your presentation, not the instructor's presentation. Uh, also, it has to be your own work, like if you include a photograph or something, you have to have taken that photograph yourself. And they're not very partial to group projects. They don't want to see group projects. They want to see individual entries of, or of work that you have done yourself. If you are entering something that is a, a group project, uh, you have to be very specific as to what in detail was the part that you collaborated in and that you worked on uh, if, if it happens to be a group project. But the reason why Carlos is here is because he went through the process of his portfolio. And um, actually, he had different formats. The portfolio that he actually um, compiled for Cornell was different mm -hmm. from the um, from Architectural Brighton. Association in, in, in London. London. Uh, you, you had like about three or four different ver versions. Five, five because portfolios. Some people want to see some, some people want to see a physical portfolio that they can hold and see. Some others want uh, uh, an e portfolio and, and so the different formats that are um, different from different universities. So so you have to be aware of that. And the thing is some schools didn't even require a portfolio. They actually told you not to. Like UT Austin and UF, for example, you then have to follow the directions. Yep. So you can't exactly. provide it to them. The only way around that um, would be if you connect individually with a representative from that college, and you say, "Would you like me to attach to an email my portfolio?" But honestly, they're probably going to say no yeah. because if it's something that they don't review for any candidate, I, I, I then the they can't. And ask one person, and they said no. They said no. I mean, you can ask. Yeah. And you know, just the fact that you ask means that you care and you, you have a portfolio. But they're not going to change the rules just for you. Um, but but a lot of colleges. Some, some, some will sometimes say yes. I had a student. I don't oh, know. Yeah? Gus Vanderfoot. Okay. I, I remember Gus. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, he um he, he went to Stanford. Okay. And they don't want portfolios. But right. he had a personal one to one um interview oh, with a representative okay. oh, so. and he goes out there with that <laughs> portfolio <laughs> and once he handed it over to him that, that personal one-on-one con -on -one yeah. connection he couldn't say no I don't want to look yeah, at it yeah you can't he unsee had it to look I mean, at it's going to affect the guys and from, he was extremely yeah, impressed awesome, I mean awesome. you know so that's something yeah. that so tell us about your experience please so in the portfolio that I made at first you might want to think it's just architecture like they were saying because uh, I was applying to an architecture school, but actually, if you go into every sort of aspect of arts, if you will, in your life, they want to see that. So, is this muted right now, or no, is it not on at all? It's not on at all. Okay, I'll take a little bit to warm up. To the key in the portfolio is to make sure you organize it and it's easy to divulge because a lot of people just like to throw their stuff in there, and even the layout itself in each page, if it's not correct, then no, not correct, just not well laid out you can't read it and you can't take in what they're trying to say. It just seems like someone just threw everything that they've done into there. That's why some schools actually limit the amount of pages and the content they have is because they don't want it to feel like a conglomerate, just everything you've done. 
they want you to be proud of the work you've done and they want to see the best work that you've done so this right here is the, the PDF of my portfolio and the layout I was trying to do was a very sectional layout of each kind of aspect of things that I was doing can you so talk about the software you use or the this was, yeah exactly mm -hmm. this was InDesign and the computers here I know do have it and if you want to get it at home let's say it take you about a month to finish it it's just fifty dollars because it's the whole program that includes Photoshop and every other Adobe software so in this sort of I had these sort of tiles of every aspect that I wanted to do which was photography then it was artwork architectural sketches and sort of 3d modeling online and just like Ms. M was saying that you want to give them a part of you my choice was to do some sort of quote most people like to actually do an introduction because for if you're doing a general admission to business or something else you just give them a general you just give them a, a sort of paragraph a little paragraph about you what you what you stand for what your morals are whatever it is like that they want to see something different they don't want to see a cookie cutter person so yeah i had put this quote there and then i made sure to organize it very well so that if they wanted to reference it to one other thing i had this so i had these panels come in like this saying artwork program photography and things i did in the summer which was key into my admission to wherever i went was the extra stuff that i did because i could have just had this which was what the school provided and had been that but everything that i tried to do over the summer and the programs that i wanted to access over the summer was what had helped me so it's okay to include things that you do for your classes Okay. I know you have yeah. a business class and architecture class, but even honestly, if you're like engineering guy, you can use stuff from your physics class or stuff mm -hmm. from your math class. Mm -hmm. Those are still, you know, projects. Those, I mean, not, not necessarily a homework page from math, but, but any project you do for English, math, science, social studies, language, it is perfectly appropriate to have some of that in here. It's not like, well, I got a grade for it, so I can't represent it as something I did extra. No, 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 this is, this is you. In, in a in a comprehensive way, so even it's if, perfectly even if you fine build, to use coursework. Even if you build, for example, a little treehouse in your house, mm -hmm. any, anything like that, they don't have this sort of structure limit of what you can put in there. They want to see creative work. So I had art, I had artwork, and it shows little numbers in the tiles, and then at the end, after all the artwork, you have, what this is what they want to see actually, they want to see the medium you use, the size, and sort of things like that. And the next portion was the architecture program. Now for the architecture program is where I started to actually write more. Hold on, can you talk yes. about the photos you took of the art pieces and the lighting and to how, like how long, how many, pe like when you photograph your uh -huh. art piece? Oh, I actually, I had what used is the, process? The, the, the process to capture these photos. Mm -hmm. There's two ways actually. One, you could try to use some sort of scanning app, which the issue with that is in order for it to look like a scan, it has a certain threshold and it won't pick up all the color gamuts. The other option is with the program you already have of InDesign, you take a simple photo and you use an application called Lightroom, which is another Adobe program. And Lightroom allows you to transform, for example, if it was like this in this perspective, it allows you to transform, warp this up, warp it to the side, and it looks like a perfect cutout. And it also allows you to do color corrections and that sort of stuff like that. But that all comes with the same program as this. So it's all How joint long effort. did it take you to do the art chapter? The art chapter? I mean, not the pieces, no, there, yeah. but, but compiling it. It actually, what took more time was selecting which ones. Oh, OK. Yeah. Because after doing, after doing art for four years, there was a lot of work. And a lot of it was alike, but a lot of it I was proud of because I mostly do pencil. but. Uh, they wanted to see other stuff, so I started to do other things. But t to compile everything itself took about a little bit of procrastination, about a week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And also, you so just so the workshop is now, so that in the summer you can maybe carve out some time to think about this, compile yeah. stuff, work on it, and that way it's not on top of all your homework and schoolwork and stuff. It's kind of ready to go almost in the fall, unless you want to tweak it a little bit. The, the next chapter was the architecture program. And this is where I started to write a little more. And even inside the chapter itself is structured. So I had, this was first year, and I started to describe a little bit about the process. And not just elaborate what I did, 
but sort of show the meaning behind every sort of thing. So this, the meaning behind these projects in the first year was to initially get the design process down with bubble sketches and things like that. And then also about the environmental aspect and that sort of stuff. If I would have just sat there and said that, yeah, it has a bedroom here with a kitchen there, and that sort of stuff like that, that would have not been enough. They wanted to see the thought process behind it. That's the key part. Um, I'm sorry, can I interrupt you yeah. real quickly? Those paragraphs mm -hmm. are a reflection of the project mm -hmm. or is it a, I mean, a summary of what you learned? I mean, I, that's what's a little <coughs> both. both. Okay. Yeah. yeah, when you when you reflect on what the project was and the meaning behind it, you show inherently what you have learned from it. Right. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. No problem. And each sort of thing it has its own year, but they have their own theme. This theme was to understand the environment. This one was the detail work. And I stuck to that detail work theme by describing how I had to learn about every tangency in the curve and how it met up with the next one. And then this project, the electrical layout and the schedules and all sort of really confined detail work, which was my second year. That's the theme I had followed for that. And then this, again, was the next theme, which was purely studies of one element. And again, with the paragraph, you start to say that this one didn't need much to be said because I already had writing and set the photos themselves, but this one was a more design-based. And then second to last was my third year. I actually don't have the work from this year in here, which, like we were saying, your portfolio never stops growing. The portfolio I'm gonna end up turning into her at the end of the year is not done. I still have to add the work from this year. This right here, had, sorry, it needed a little more paragraph than speaking in it because the element that I had done for here had a certain scientific meaning behind it and it had a psychological meaning behind it. That sort of thing right there was something on the side of a house that at certain times during the day in a location in South Africa, it would let light in when you wanted it and it wouldn't let light in when you don't want it and at different periods of the year too. So all that had to be calculated and that's what I had described here. And then the next one was the same theme of it being integrated into a house. So everything is, is the structure. There's, there's no randomness in all of this. It might feel sort of random, like you don't know what's gonna come next, but everything has a purpose and it builds up on each other. And this was something I didn't know they were gonna want. And so I started looking at other portfolios of people, it was the, the photography. And just like my son was saying, you have to make sure that it's your own photography, obviously. <laughs> so these also followed their own sort of theme. This was Deserts of the World, and I had, this was Atacama in Chile. This was Patagonia Putarenas, which is the most southern part of, of Chile next to Antarctica. And this was, again, more south of, of uh, sorry, of Atacama. And the sort of thing that goes along with that, with the deserts that are down here, is again something that you wouldn't think would relate but it was showing the relate and the differences between deserts of other places in the world like this right here is is utah and this is chile and you and i was drawing comparisons about how this is more minerally and more rocky trying to imply the sort of thing of the mining in chile and this was utah and idaho where it's more sandy again you wouldn't think they want it for architecture but they see that you're going into this and you're going through these depths and you're analyzing everything in your environment and when they start to see that, they see, oh wow, maybe this kid's actually sitting there thinking, he's not just going on a trip. <laughs> Even if you couple it on the spot, just put it in there. So these images were more of the hidden art in everyday life. So for example, on the top left, Boston, Bahamas, that was actually in Cornell, the, the glass these sort of gnarled pieces of wood here next to the gorges and Cornell as well. And like I say here, that it's only when you pay attention that you find the hidden beauty and the complexity in this earth. And I said to describe where every photo is from. Again, straightforward thing, but it shows that you're there and you're thinking and you don't just go and take a photo, you think about the composure. This doesn't have to do with architecture really, but it shows the little mental work there. This one was the photography that had to do more with architecture, which is through the ages. And this, for example, was a bridge in Canada. 
showing the relation to a city like Barcelona, which was here, and this was actually the architecture in Chile. What the, and I sort of described here a little bit, the cool thing about this one was this was actually an old meatpacking farm, and they converted the facade of the outside, which was this really grotesque brick exterior, and the inside they built around it on the inside, and it made the sort of irony, coppery, concrete modernness and they kept they preserved the outside which was this history and it sort of ties in the same thing that happens in Barcelona they and then also in the rest of Spain they keep this sort of old style facade on the outside of the old buildings but then on the inside they actually build something new like the building of Zara in, in Madrid is the same sort of thing just like Chicago too they say exactly yeah. they want to preserve the outside a lot of buildings that survived the Chicago fire mm -hmm. but you go inside and everything's brand new exactly and this again, this was London, Miami, Prague, and Prague, and it just shows the difference of everything and how each city has evolved in their own respective way. And then we go into the the, the summer projects. This was actually someone who had come to me, which was an alum of MSM, and he wanted to do a year in the U.S. traveling all around in a bus, and it had to be very specific for his needs, which his needs. He's a photographer. So for example, he needed a place for the models to get ready. So he ha I had this makeup table designed in here. And every sort of compartment in here, as you can see with this chain, every chair, every table, every couch is multifunctional. It retracts, it opens up to have storage. Nothing was by accident, everything was on purpose. This seems like a small project, but in the era that we're going, which is m mini houses and mini compartments, they wanna see that you are conscious of space. Because this is a this is a regular school bus. So there's not much space, but then if you look inside, it feels spacious. Surprisingly, but uh, for example, storing under here, this table folds down with the peg that folds around it. This desk here, and also in the back, you can see here, there was deep storage for all the lighting equipment and anything expensive that he had, and even the bathroom had to be thought about. If you can see here, the sort of toilet, which is a compost toilet meaning there's no water in there. Um, he believed in it, I didn't, he wanted to have a no water toilet. I was like, you sure? Listen to your customer, yeah. right? Listen to the client. But the shower right here had to be on the same wall as the sink because the plumbing runs under here and the gray water tank is on the bottom of the bus. Again, I had to think about how to create my own power and how to store it and the water filtration and all that. And he had his little motorcycle in the back. To get right. And this was like, this was a summer project. I did not, everyone's gonna do a, a summer, summer program, but this was in UF. I don't have much to say about it. It was, the program was also for people who had never done architecture before, so most of it was just learning based. And I thought I had already represented that well enough in other ones. But this was just a small thing of a study showing the, the voice, learning of volumes, which actually that is what I did learn, was volumes and how they interact with each other. But yeah, and in other portfolios that I had done, the layout was actually completely different. I didn't include, I included maybe two pieces of art because I wanted to do more architecture for that school. And I, I know that school wanted more architecture. I put more photography for this one because they were more sort of liberal arts. It all I had to change for every single one. Now, apparently that hasn't really happened as much before with the students at Ms. Hamas had. She was like going through the same process with me newly, but the key is to just make sure you know what the school wants and the, even the theme of the school. And everything has to be well structured in there. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so thoughts, what you like, what don't you like, what relates to you, what, what it look at, what has your gears going about, oh, now I'm going to do this, or, I'm going to think about that. Oh, you want to start making pictures? Oh, you want to start Oh, I, this, I actually wasn't even, with this, taking these pictures, I wasn't thinking, I'm going to put them in my portfolio. They were just me th taking pictures, and I'm like going through, and I'm like, oh, I like that one, and things like that. It doesn't, didn't have to be a specific use. I like the idea that a portfolio gives the person that might be giving you an internship or might be accepting you to college or whatever mm -hmm. uh, a really good uh, view of who you are, I mean, multi-dimensional. Mm -hmm. Like, not just the architecture, which I mean, you're obviously an excellent architecture student, but Thank you. the fact that you're, you have a good eye for photography. Mm -hmm. And maybe in future portfolios, that favorite poem that you wrote, in English class. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, Absolutely, just, yes. you know, that mm -hmm. wonderful artwork. Yeah. I, I think yeah. of Caitlin Simmons. Mm -hmm. That, oh, wow. you know, Caitlin yeah. was an outstanding right. architecture student. Uh -huh. She went to Rice University. Mm -hmm. But what is it that I remember about Caitlin walking into the library and seeing one of the sculptures that she did mm -hmm. that the library used? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. so mm -hmm. I, the idea of putting all of that in a portfolio, I like that. I like well, that. Well, whatever, whatever you sort of geek out about, whatever you get into, it should be represented in some way in here. And then also, of course, um, your influences. I mean, you almost, when you're reading those paragraphs, you kind of feel like you get to know Carlos a little better. You know how his brain works. You know his perspective. And if I'm a college admission person or if I'm hiring, um, I want to have a blend of people who are going to influence each other and have this amazing dynamic once they get together in the freshman dorms or classes or once they get together in the office. Um, you know, at nine o'clock in the morning every day. So they are definitely wanting to get more out of you than just basic skills because you never know. Some college might want to say, like, I know Florida State's like this with their video production, their, their film school. They don't necessarily want you to have film skills. They want you to be sort of a, a diamond in the rough. They want to take this raw talent of a student who has a lot to say and is super creative and has this really crazy artistic you know, um, perspective of the world and they will teach them how to do the film. We, you don't need to know how to do that. We will teach them how to do the film. Other companies think, I, I, I need to teach them what our industry does. We don't tell a lot of people how the inner workings of our company does, you know, does what we do. We have rivals out there. We don't share secrets like that, you know, corporate secrets. But if we get the right people in, we'll train them how to do our thing. We just need the pieces to be there. We need the, the basic skills and the foundational things to be there, like creativity or collaboration or patience. I mean, you know, you can tell that Carlos must be a relatively patient human being in order to do some of the detail work that he does in his thing. So even if it's not for architecture, it's something else, you're, you're understanding who this person is and kind of getting in their heads. So maybe you want to start with a list of adjectives that describe yourself, what sets you apart from other people in your classes and what you pride yourself in and things you've been working on. And then, okay, how do I illustrate those traits? Okay, I'm going to use this paper from my English class or poem. I'm going to you know, take this, take that. Um, it doesn't all have to be creative. Um, this is heavily creative, but certainly the technical stuff is very important too. And using the jargon of the industry that you are uh, immersed in and whatever, whatever your projects have been, whether it's business. I mean, you've got to use the jargon. If you don't talk a, like a person in the industry after taking classes here and after doing a summer program or after things you've read, then something's wrong. Like you kind of... And that's where the counselors can have a limit to how much we can help. <laughs> because, I mean, I'm just like, it's all amazing. Use it all. But, you know, Carlos is like, oh, it was kind of hard to narrow down what pictures to use. Well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I think it's all great. I don't know. I've had students say to me, you know, can you read my essay? And it's very heavy uh, stuff about a historical concept. And I'm reading it for certain things, but I also needed to ask our, one of our history teachers to help me because I don't know what if he was saying was very basic and remedial or even accurate, um, but I'm impressed. I think it's fine, but I don't, I'm not familiar with that historical you know, thing that they were writing about. So we definitely need, as counselors, we need to bring in the computer people, <laughs> the architecture people, the history people, the any fill in the blank people to know that what you're talking about jargon-wise is actually accurate, not this kind of loose mess that isn't very impressive to anyone. So that's why we're collaborative. That's why we, we need help. The, the key in all of this is to show compassion and to show drive. That's one of the things the school wants to see the most, if not what they want to see the most. If you put something that you would consider petty in, so in your portfolio, but you show that you have this, this drive, this passion, and you want to either better the world or you want to be the best at this if you show that will and that motivation that's what they want they don't want because they want to see someone who's going to stay in their program and if they see someone who maybe it was a small project but they feel very passionate about it they're like i want to make this a real thing 
That's what they want. Um, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and um, upload this to YouTube, and I'm going to share the link with uh, the administrators and teachers here. So all you need to do, you don't have to memorize this whole thing. Uh, just find them, find Ms. Manrique, and she can forward you the link to the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.